Hey you guys, welcome back. If you guys are new, my name is Lauren and I'm a nurse that's here for all your science back skincare reviews. Meaning that, I promise you, you will never see an at home lemon peel mask on my channel. No marshmallow masks over here. None of these fluffy skincare products. I like to review skincare that has ingredients that are backed by data. So with that said, what better line to review than Selfless by Hiram. I was so excited to pick up these products. I've been a fan of Hiram for years. I just find him so funny, he's entertaining, and he puts out really Really great skincare information so I was excited to see what he was going to put forth and these products had me very intrigued so I picked up two products that I thought would be most suitable for my dry skin type both the cleanser and the moisturizer now on Sephora's website it does say that the rice brand serum is also great for dry skin but you guys know I was testing out the polish choice versus the drunk elephant exfoliating serums so I felt like it wasn't really a fair to add in another exfoliating serum I couldn't really give it its true review so I wanted to just try out these two products and I to be honest I was most excited about these two products so the whole line is typical Hiram so thoughtful when it comes to first the ingredients and how they're sourced all the ingredients are ethically sourced all the packaging is a hundred percent recyclable and actually the packaging comes from a hundred percent sugar cane how cool is that the outer packaging is made from 90 percent recyclable material and a portion of the proceeds will go to two charities one that protects rainforests and one that provides clean water so really cool you know your purchase is going towards a better cause um, the price is a little on the higher end I know a lot of people came down on him because he talks about affordable skincare I thought the prices were pretty fair especially considering a portion of them go to charity and of course everybody else has to make a profit they're mid-level I would say for Sephora they're not on the cheaper end they're not you know lower level inky list or ordinary prices but they're not JLo prices either. So I'll compare it to the Biosense Cleanser, but you can see the Biosense Cleanser is also five ounces, and the packaging is a little larger with the Biosense, so I don't know, maybe you're getting a little less waste with Hiram's over here. And the amount you're getting seems to be the standard amount. Both of these are five ounces. The moisturizer is also 1.7, which is a standard amount for a moisturizer. They also have these helpful little details in their packaging. They have a sun and a moon based on whether or not you use the product AM versus PM, and there's also this barcode on the back of the product where you can scan and it tells you all the detailed information about the product. So all in all, I feel like the brand is very thought through. I love that all the ingredients are backed by data. There were some areas where I felt like it was lacking. I'll talk about that in the end, but first let's get into the products. So the Centella and Green Tea Daily Cleanser is designed to be used both morning and night. It is gentle enough to be used in the morning. As far as the directions go, I mean, you guys know how to use a cleanser. I won't go through this whole thing, but it does say to wet skin first and then to apply the cleanser. I did find that you achieve a very nice gentle lather. It's not a super soapy lather and it's mainly a glycerin based cleanser so it's going to be a very hydrating cleanse. It's not going to leave your skin feeling stripped. As a matter of fact I find my skin feeling very hydrated after using this and it has this cocoa glucoside. Um, this is a nice gentle cleanser that's in here and I find that that's in a lot of the cleansers that I really enjoy and there's both centella and green tea in here both known for its brightening and antioxidant effects. Now I, I thought it was really cool. Hiram mentioned that they didn't put too much of each of these extracts in here because he knows that it's going to essentially be washed off your face but just enough where you're going to get those gentle calming effects from these extracts so I thought that was another thoughtful part of this line so really cool there I love that it's just a simple ingredient list not too much fluff in here I felt like my pores were cleansed I didn't feel like I needed a second cleanse so I'm very excited about this cleanser I think this would work across all different skin types like Hiram mentions I found it very gentle and like I said a light nice lather it left my skin feeling very moisturized and I thought it did a great job at getting off my makeup it almost like grabs my makeup and it immediately rinsed off my mascara so I thought this was an amazing cleanser for removing makeup removing sunscreen very effective and I love the gel to creamy like velvety texture it feels so nourishing and satisfying on the skin I really really enjoy this cleanser and this actually reminds me of a lot of other other cleansers that I really love and get along with. So the Polish Choice and Mega Complex Cleansing Balm is very similar in that velvety effective cleanse exactly like this consistency. This is maybe maybe a little thinner, but just as effective as the Polish Choice and just as moisturizing. And then also the Biosense. This is also a little thicker, but the consistency is very similar in that it has that thicker, silky feel to it. And then the Hemish Green Foam All Clean Cleanser. This is a favorite among 
all K-beauty fans, it seems like. I love this cleanser. It develops a nice gentle foam like the Selfless by Hiram, and it still leaves that moisturized, non-stripped feeling, very similar to the Hemish. So yeah, I'm super excited about this. Um, price of $20, I feel like it's pretty fair. You're getting a lot in here, and a little bit goes a long way. So big fan of this. All right, now getting into the moisturizer. This is the Niacinamide and Maracuja Moisturizer. There's 5% Niacinamide in here. There's also 1% Maracuja. I love Maracuja oil. It's great for nourishing the skin. It really packs a ton of good barrier-protecting amino acids into the skin. And then, you guys might have to help me with this pronunciation, more moo butter. So this is a nice emollient, a nice moisturizing agent. It's supposed to be thick and slightly occlusive. It leaves skin feeling as silky soft. And as far as the directions go, you can also use this AM and PM. It says to use after cleansing and after serums and gently massage into the face and to apply before your SPF. And Hiram does say that it's suitable for dry skin types, although on Sephora's website, it leaves out the dry skin type. So I don't know what that's about, but it does seem like it had nice nourishing ingredients in here, nice moisturizers. So I thought it'd be good for my dry skin. So let's talk about my experience. So when I first apply this, I was really impressed by that initial burst of refreshing hydration it you really feel the like the water is being pushed into your skin it's so cooling on the skin also you really get that benefit of that water to cream moisturizer feel it just feels so hydrating on that initial impact but as it dries down it almost felt a little thick and heavy on the skin which is weird because it feels so thin initially but I did not like the way it dries down it kind of almost felt tight on my skin as well and even when I put a sunscreen over it I thought it would kind of I don't know minimize the heaviness but it made it feel even heavier and the tackiness I did not enjoy it's very very sticky so I was pretty bummed by the formula. I was hoping it would be a lot more silky, being that it's a gel cream. There's so many other gel creams I get along with, even being dry. Um, the Drunk Elephant Proteiny Cream I love. The Dear Claire's is a great, um, oh, what's that one called? The Fundamental Gel Cream. That is a great one. So, so there's ones that don't have to dry down super sticky, but I was not impressed by the sticky texture. Now, it could be that there's 5% niacinamide in here, and I know the Ordinary's Niacinamide Serum, I hated it because it was so sticky, so it could be that niacinamide ingredient. I will say, though, as it dried down, that stickiness goes away within an hour, and my skin did eventually feel pretty soft. It does feel really nourishing and not as moisturizing as I would like, not as occlusive as I would like, even though it leaves that heavy feel. It doesn't feel like, you know, you're preventing water loss. It just feels sticky and kind of uncomfortable on the face. So for me, I'm going to continue to use this as an AM moisturizer. I will say the pros to this, this works great underneath makeup because of that tackiness. It works as a great primer. I'm wearing it today underneath my Biosense SPF and then with foundation over it and everything just kind of adheres to it. And even with SPF, it allows, I don't know, it doesn't allow the SPF to slide around. So I appreciated that, but I will say this does feel heavy. Now over time, I'm excited to see if it has as an improvement in my barrier function. Maybe it'll help with my dryness eventually because it does have that barrier support with the niacinamide. So I'm excited to see those long-term effects. But for right now, it's just not enough to be used as a nighttime moisturizer. So yeah, I was bummed by the formulation, but I appreciate that this is a treatment moisturizer. But for those dry skin types out there, you might get by with using this as more of like a serum before a moisturizer or even an AM a lightweight moisturizer before your SPF. And then you're getting the benefit of the niacinamide as well. Now this product I will compare to the Stradia Liquid Gold. I love this. This is a skin strengthening moisturizer and it's supposed to be also great for barrier function, but this is also too light for me to use as a final moisturizer. It's not as occlusive, but I feel like I'm getting those same softening effects with the top layer of my skin. So this does feel very similar, but this leaves that silky velvety finish. So unfortunately I do still like this a little better, but again, you're going to get the brightening and the smoothing from the niacinamide hopefully after long-term use. But yeah, think of this more of like a barrier support lightweight moisturizer similar to the Stradia. So final thoughts on these two products. 
Love the cleanser. Love that velvety finish. I love that moisturized feel. Non-stripping. This will definitely be a staple in my skincare routine. The moisturizer, however, I was definitely disappointed. I was not a fan of that final sticky, tacky feel and that heaviness. I like the 5% niacinamide. I like that this is a treatment moisturizer, but it just was not enough for my dry skin. And that is my big overall disappointment in the line. It's not, there's not too many dry skinned options. I'd love to see eventually a more occlusive moisturizer and and also a moisturizing SPF, that would be awesome. Um, but yeah, just not enough for me to choose from. But overall, I do feel like in typical Hiram fashion, all the ingredients were data-backed, of course. Everything seemed so thorough, so well-researched. I love that the, all the ingredients were ethically sourced. Love the recyclable packaging, and I love that a portion of the proceeds will go to charity. So really cool. I thought he did a great job, but just not enough for my dry skin friends out there, I felt like, anyway. But thank you guys so much for watching this video. Let me know if you guys are intrigued in his line. Did you pick up anything? Did you try out anything? I'd love to hear from you guys. And if you're not subscribed to my channel already, I'd love to have you. Lots of skincare chatting over here. So all my skincare fans, come join us. It's a fun time. I think it's a fun time anyway. <laughs> but thank you guys so much for watching. You guys are the best. And I will see you guys in my next video. Bye, guys.